Welcome to Our Schools, Our Future. Tonight we have quite an exciting show for you. We have Ms. Paige Bennett from San Angela Marisi who's going to tell us about some exciting things happening at San Angela. But we also have Ms. Leela Benoit, the President Principal of Archbishop Chappelle High School, along with two students, Mallory and Abby. And we look forward to hearing about some things that are happening at Chappelle. It's quite a great year there as well. But first of all, I have Sarah McDonald, the Director of Communications for the Archdiocese of New Orleans. Sarah, thank you so much for being here tonight. Of course, Jan. Thank you for having me. Now, we're going to do things a little differently here. Yes. I'm going to throw it over to you, <laughs> and you're actually going to ask questions to me. Yes, because um, we want to thank you for your service as superintendent. We, you have made the I announcement that it. you are going to step down in, in June to take on uh, some new adventures yet to be determined. That's right. That's right. So you have been with us for six years as superintendent of Catholic schools. What are some of the things that you're most proud of uh, during your tenure? Well, you know, I think um, as I look back on the six years, I really have enjoyed uh, working with the Archbishop and um, the many leaders in our schools. I've seen firsthand the true face of the church and as I go visit schools and what has been um, kind of a, uh, I guess going through the strategic plan, mm -hmm. I, I really saw administrators looking for what's best for the family of Catholic schools and coming together and, and I think that has just been so um, heartwarming and seeing that everyone has the true mission of our church as, as first and foremost and, and seeing them work together um, because you know what it really is a ministry and, and we may say that and people hear that but I can feel that difference and I think to be a superintendent to be the superintendent I got to see that in all the schools mm -hmm. and to me that's uh, I think was the most rewarding thing um, to see so many people coming together for the betterment of the church and and in the name of our faith and in the name of Christ. So I think that was so so rewarding to and, me. And you know, the Archbishop often mentions it's a vocation in Catholic education. Exactly. So I think that you've so well um, talked about that eloquently. Um, you've, you've mentioned the strategic plan. There have been a lot of initiatives to grow out of the strategic plan, but one that wasn't quite named but has taken on um, a lot of um, prominence this most recent year is the special needs initiative. Um, is, is that something that we're going to see continue um, once you've taken or once you've moved on and a new position, person has come in? Well, you know, as we did the study for the strategic plan, one of the um, the commonalities of almost every meeting we had was people would mention special needs. So it, it's mentioned in there from the standpoint that we really need to do something and this needs to be addressed. Also, my first day meeting with the Archbishop, the first sentence he said to me, he said, while we have St. Michael's and we have Holy Rosaries and that's wonderful, the, both of those, work. right, they do beautiful work, wonderful ministries, but we need to do more to meet the needs of God's special children in Catholic education and that's something that you really need to do. So right away um, with Jane Baker and, and many people in, in the Office of Catholic Schools and many principals, we started having conversations about this. And then Jay Zaney, uh, I think you know Judge Jay Zaney, mm -hmm. also met with me. So we formed these committees that just talked about how not only do we need to meet the needs of, of kids with special needs, but it needs to be a priority. It needs to be a priority in our schools. And so through many of those conversations, we now have formulated a plan that um, is really, I think, going to work so well. We have some of our schools as well as uh, different um, companies through in the archdiocese that are going to partner with us mm -hmm. and help us really meet the needs of, of kids maybe with Downs and autism and other health impaired. And we're going to start a small pilot program on the North Shore, and we're looking at, at, some, at, at a couple of schools that will be announced shortly. But it's going to be exciting because this is going to take place in the 17-18 school year. Now, this year, we also have um, 10 schools that have put in some resources to expand how they serve kids with learning differences and learning difficulties. So while it's very near and dear to my heart, it really is the Archbishop's initiative. So it's something that will continue um, as the new superintendent comes on. I actually see this as one of um, 
the largest initiatives that the new superintendent will have to implement in our schools. And, and that excites me. It is very exciting to think we could, uh, we have so many families that have asked for this over the years that I've been with the Archdiocese, so it, it's a wonderful thing to see really take root. Um, you've talked a lot, whenever you talk about leadership within our schools and within the Office of Catholic Schools, about bringing specific gifts and talents for specific times. What are some of the things you hope to see um, in, in a new superintendent? And um, how do you see that kind of taking shape in this transition? Well, what, what I would think, um, we've started a lot with the collaboration of the principals. We also have built future leaders. We have about 30 new principals or people starting to be principals. So I, I hope that the, um, that the new superintendent continues that. I also hope that the new superintendent, as I said, would really strongly um, encourage special needs in our schools. I think that's going to be the, the number one thing. But most importantly, I really like um, the collaboration among our schools, that we really are one family of Catholic schools. So I think, I think they're going to have, um, you know, it, it has been such a wonderful position because, like I said, you're working with so many great people. So I really think that the, the new superintendent coming on board, I, they're, they're going to love this position. This is a great, great position. And, but it is something that I think in a leadership role like this, for us, overseeing schools, for me anyway, I've, I've always done this as a principal, I think between five and seven years is a good timeline. where You can go in, make the changes, use your gift and talents, and then move on and let someone else come in and utilize their gift and talents. But as we look for a new superintendent, um, I want to ask you, I know people are, um, are wondering about the whole search process, and I know you're working with that along with Karen Heil in our um, Human Resource Department. So could you tell us a little bit about the process of searching for a new superintendent? Sure. Well, I guess you could say we officially opened the search by posting the uh, the job description on nolacatholic.org. So the job description for superintendent as well as um, all the qualifications are all available for those people who would like to look at it, who want to share it with somebody who might be interested. We'll be accepting CVs through December the 7th and I know uh, pretty much as soon as those applications start coming in they're going to be reviewed with the hopes of getting someone in to transition with you so that it's not uh, um, an in and out, but that there's a very smooth transition for our school leaders um, as well as our, all of our schools. And so um, we're very excited. We're, we're definitely going to miss working with you, um, or at least regularly. Who knows what the future has in store? <laughs> but um, I know I've appreciated our working relationship well, for so you, many Sarah. years now. I have now. too. I have too. And just so people will know, I think the ad will also be in the Clarion Herald. Yes. And it will be on um, the NCEA website, National Catholic, Catholic Educators Association website, and then go out to the superintendents on a national level. So. I'm excited about that. But Sarah, I just want to say it has been a pleasure working with you. I have loved working with our Archbishop. We <laughs> work, both wonderful. work closely with Archbishop yes. Amen and really with all the leaders. So, and the teachers, and, and you know what has been really neat is uh, when I go to the schools, seeing the kids, because mm -hmm. that's the whole reason that we're here, is for the benefit for kids to learn about our Catholic faith. And, and our schools succeed in, in really, in, just getting kids to, to know the faith and that they have an obligation to, to grow up and, and live a life of service right. in, in the name of our faith. So that, that's what I love about going in our schools. So once again, thank you for being here. Thank you, Jan, for having me. And we'll be right back. You're watching WLAE, New Orleans Public Television. Find us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Welcome back. I have with me Paige Bennett, who is the principal of St. Angela Marisi. Now, Paige, I am an alum of St. Angela Marisi. I was a member of the first class to go all the way through from kindergarten to eighth grade. And what a great legacy for our school. Oh. The perfect <laughs> example of what we expect from a St. Angela Marisi student. Well, I will say this. When I go to our Catholic schools, I have such a sense of community, and I can really feel um, the presence of our faith. And I felt that as a child at St. Angela and high school at Ursuline, but I feel that throughout the Archdiocese. 
So what can you tell me, I mean, at St. Angelo, what do you do to ensure that feeling of, of our church, of, of community, and as of, of, the, of our faith? Well, we're very blessed to have a school um, that is a small community feel. We start every day in the morning with an all-school morning meeting. We come together. We talk about God's plan for our children's lives. We talk about activities going on at school. Many of our parents show up at morning meeting, which we're thrilled to have there to join in that. We get to recognize children's birthdays and recognize them for being um, the top AR reader or um, different monthly values like the most faithful child. So that community builds from that beginning of the school day. Our pastor, Father Bo, comes every morning and blesses our kids before they start the day. Many times he brings guitar, sings with them. We start with music. So we really start with the community field, then we move up to the classroom, and it really continues throughout the day. You know, one of the reasons I think that we have such of that faith-based community feel is because in most of our schools, we had religious orders, and they brought with them great charisms. One of the things that I found that I loved about having the Ursuline sisters when I was at St. Angela was the charism of Serviam, both in the elementary and the high school. And that's so near and dear to me. And I think that still permeates St. Angela because it's a school that I see given back. Could you tell me a little bit about how you all give back to the community through service? It is such an important part of what we do. Um, both as a Christian and as a Catholic school, we know that to serve is what we're called to do. You know, we oftentimes talk about being the hands and feet of Jesus, and we really truly um, use that at St. Angela as an example of what we should act like as Christians in our community. We have many service programs. One in particular is called Heart to Heart. It's a program where our children pick a theme each month, for instance, Feed the Hungry. And we might have our seventh graders go to the food bank and work there, volunteer there. We might have children cook for their neighbor or bring food for the food bank. And, and each one of them may do it in a different way, but they're all participating in the same service project. It's voluntary, but what we find is our, our students do it. We talk about it. They come in on the last Friday of the month for Mass. They each cut out a heart, and they decorate it and write what they did in service for that month. And that is brought up with the offertory during Mass. And it's a great way for our children to realize every little part together comes together to make a bigger picture of service from our school into the community. St. Angela would be so proud because in studying the writings and teachings of St. Angela, she really believed that that was the best way to educate students through service, through Serviam. So just to hear that you all give back so much, um, and all of our schools do. All of our schools, as you said, it, it's the face of the church. We want to be the face of the church in the name of Jesus. And so uh, I, I love seeing that. But also, you all have um, embarked ab upon a new focus with science and technology in your schools. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Because your curriculum is very strong as well. It is. One of our focuses since um, the past two years was to really focus on science and technology, but bringing it throughout the curriculum. Um, about two years ago, we went all Apple with a Mac lab as well as iPads throughout um, the school itself. And the reason we went with that is Apple really integrates very nicely with education. Um, and as our children go on, uh, little one's parents don't always think about it, but they will be moving on to high school where most of the high schools expect them to know how to do math on an iPad or to be familiar with that type of education. So we use it throughout the curriculum. Um, the science part, we know from the very little ones all the way up to our seventh graders, if we're doing the letter V, we don't want to do a worksheet. We want to see a volcano erupt. And that's so important for our kids. As they move up in the upper grades, they dissect in seventh grade. We know our kids retain more if they've touched it, felt it, and actually created something. So we really have worked towards that in our curriculum over the past two years, and we've seen a lot of success. And one of the things I think um, that you had mentioned to me with the technology and with different um, programs you're implementing, you're able to better meet the needs of, of the children in your schools. Absolutely. And all schools have children in different areas that need help. You know, all of us have strengths in different areas. We tell our students that all the time, that God blesses us with a certain um, gift. 
and it might be in academics. And for those kids that are academically gifted, we have programs for that, like our challenge program. Um, our third and fourth grade challenge program right now is working on robotics, which they love. We also have areas of need where students might need a little more help. They might be great creatively, but need a little more help in the reading area. We do have a learning lab that meets those needs for our students, um, as well as OT. Um, so we have a full spectrum of what, you know, our job is to make sure every one of our students get what they need every day, both academically, socially, emotionally, and of course spiritually. So it kind of goes across all realms. Yeah, and uh, it's almost time for us to end. But just real quickly, I know that there is a new program which is supporting the faith formation of the students. And if you could just very quickly touch on that because I wanted to get this in. Uh, it's such a neat program. It is something so dear to my heart. I saw it first about four years ago and knew I needed it at St. Angela. It's a hands-on program to learn about our faith and the church. And so it, and it's called Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. Mm -hmm. So our students, if they're learning about the visitation of Mary, they take out um, Elizabeth's house and, and they have all the figures for every Bible story they learn about as well as the mass in general. Well, that, that's wonderful. And like I said, when I go to San Angela, being an alum, I'm just so proud. And I love the way that Serviam is so integrated and that we're the face of the church to so many through our many school communities. So thank you so much for being here, uh, Paige. I really appreciate it. It's always nice talking to you. Thank you. And I thank you for being here as well. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Good night.